Welcome to our service of worship at First Congregational Church of Des Plaines. We're glad that you're here to share it with us. And we hope that you'll stay around for the whole service because we have some special announcements at the end of the service. October is our anniversary month, our anniversary of our church founding. Um, so we have a couple special things planned for October. It is our 151st anniversary celebration. It looks a little bit different than our 150th, but it's still a celebration. So you'll hear more about that in a little bit. Uh, a reminder to any guests, visitors, everybody out there to please sign our guest book at the end so that we know who was here to share this worship service with us. So again, thanks for being here. And now I invite you to please join us for worship. Please join me in the call to worship, which is printed on your screen. Creator God, we are here together in hope. With community and creation. With neighbors near and far. With those known and new. With Christians across geography and across time. Together in hope. Let us worship God. Now please join me in the invocation, which is printed on your screen. Holy and gracious God, let us be open to your presence among your people, those gathered for worship and all of your people throughout your creation. May we receive you fully and respond to you with all that is within us. Amen. A reading from the 21st chapter of Matthew, verses 33 through 46. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, 
he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking to them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. Here ends the gospel. There is the saying that when the cat is away, the mice came out to play. And basically what this idiom means is that whenever there is, or when the authority goes away, people can start doing as they please. And I mean, maybe you remember from your childhood days, that moment that your parents left the house and immediately you called your friends uh, to come over or like one of our church members Don used to say when the cat is away the mice came out to play but my co-worker was never like that this proverb has been around since the 1600s and have been used in numerous countries uh, with just a slight variance with what, what the mice do and in, in many countries it will go like this when the cat goes away the mice came out to dance and even if and if you in in Dutch uh, they actually say that the mice came out to play the mice came out to dance on the table and I always wondered about that uh, maybe it's because they had all the cheese on the table. Anyhow, in our scripture reading, uh, the cat is also away. The, the vineyard owner was, is, is away on business and the tenant started uh, thinking, well, this is an ideal time. But they didn't play or neither did they even start to dance when that cat was away actually they resort to violence. This parable is actually just one of three parables that's included in the three synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke. And of course the other two that goes with the parable of the tenant is the parable, parable about the mustard seed and the sower. It's kind of interesting that even a parable like the Good Samaritan is only included in the Gospel according to Luke. And there must have been a really good reason why the Gospel writers decided to include this parable in their stories. It is quite surprising because if we take in consideration that the 
parable of the tenants are not uh, so popular and widely known as many of the other parables and maybe it's because the authors realize that here uh, that the message is central uh, to the gospel of, of Jesus because we find a, a key shift uh, by Jesus from Israel to the rest of the world. Our very first clue comes in our first verse of our scripture reading, verse 33. I mean, Jesus is very detailed. He could have just said, there once was a man who owned a vineyard, but instead he gave dramatic details in his parable when this owner started his vineyard. I mean, he built a wall, he installed the wine press and also uh, a watchtower. So what is up with all this detail in Jesus' parable? Well, if we do some a little bit of research, we will find that it is a clear, perfect reference to Isaiah chapter 5, where Israel is also compared to a vineyard. And in this parable in Isaiah, uh, God is the vineyard owner and he establishes this vineyard. He put in a lot of money, uh, a lot of effort, and many, much of his resources and with the expectation that when harvest finally shows up that he will have a bumper crop and and so harvest day did eventually come around and uh, with harvest time every single vine had sour grapes on it all of it were bitter and and inedible and and so this vineyard owner uh, went and plow uh, up this whole uh, vineyard. Uh, he was so mad. And the reason why Isaiah told the people of Israel this parable was it was kind of a prophetic warning uh, of what's going to happen to them. That as a nation that they will be plow under by the Babylonians uh, in a short foreseeable future simply because the people of Israel did not produce the spiritual fruit that was expected from them. This was a key turning point in God's dealing with the world. And it is kind of interesting and the fact that Jesus now invokes that very same image of Isaiah 5 in Matthew 21 is basically saying to the people that God has also reached once again a new turning point uh, in history uh, and in Jesus parable God is the vineyard owner uh, Israel of course is the vineyard and the tenants are none other than the religious uh, leaders and once we make this connection with Jesus parable and Isaiah 5 it kind of makes sense why we are told at the end of our parable that the church leaders, the religious leaders knew exactly uh, that Jesus was talking about them and that is why they got so mad. Jesus was clearly saying that the vineyard tenants or the church leaders or the religious leaders were on the wrong side of history. And, and so he asked this crowd, what do you think this vineyard owner is going to do with them? And the crowd responded and said, uh, this vineyard owner is going to annihilate them. Uh, they, he's going to get rid of the evil evils. And it's kind of interesting that the Greek word for evil is used twice, uh, basically just to emphasize how bad it really is. And so this is the worst of the worst. But interestingly is Jesus' response. And instead of con uh, to confirm what they just said, he kind of quotes from another Old Testament reading, Psalm 118, about a stone who have been rejected by the builders, and that very stone would become a cornerstone. And one can probably imagine what 
went through the minds of the crowd i mean say come on jesus tell us what did the vineyard owner do or what happened uh, to the tenants and and what is all this talk about a stone being rejected and becoming uh, the cornerstone this parable is all about rejection first the tenants rejects the owner and then they reject the servants of the owner and then they also rejects the very own son of the vineyard owner the problem of the tenants or the religious leaders was maybe because they thought that they have figured out everything about god and in their mind they could run the kingdom of god without god and when god sent prophets to warn them they rejected the prophets and even killed them. Their narrow-mindedness was so bad that unless someone affirmed what they, were, what they were already doing or believing, that person could not represent God. I mean, in their mind, they had God figured out uh, and it was easy for them to reject you if you don't sing their tune and if religious leaders have reached that point including including ourselves with god it has become a bad moment in history but lucky for us we know that our cat is never away. God is always Emmanuel. Amen.
trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me It is now time to share our joys and concerns in our fellowship of prayer. And my first or only joy, as probably more, is that our Wednesday work crew is working this weekend at Tower Hill. And through my message, I was able to show you some of the spots in this wonderful church campground and also the wonderful work they do, not only for our youth, but for adult uh, weekend retreats and uh, also grandpa and me, uh, or grandparents and me with Dr. Bill Grice. Um, our church really has a good relationship uh, with Tower Hill and thank you for everyone that contribute so much uh, to the scholarships to make it possible for our children to attend uh, during the summer. Of course, when there is not a COVID lockdown we are thankful for the members of our Wednesday work crew who took the weekend and come and do some basic maintenance and in this way also help and support the church. I have also received the following prayer request and before I do, I also got the message from our national office, the UCC, that it is one thing when we share joys and concerns in the church to use first name and last name of a person but we should be careful because we don't know when someone who is watching an online service so to protect people's privacy we should try from now on to refrain from mentioning a person's last name so when I ask for someone in prayer or bring it up and you want to know who the person is, I ask you that you would contact me and I will give you that information. So please keep the following people in your prayers. Uh, Tim and pass away uh, due to complications of COVID-19. And then we also heard the news to the, uh, that uh, the President of the United States and his wife uh, also had tested positive uh, for COVID-19 and we ask that you also keep them in your prayers. This event also has made us aware once again uh, on the severeness of uh, this virus and I urge you that you will continue to be safe, wear your mask and, and practice social distancing. Also prayers for Jesse which is when, uh, uh, Wendy's friend Holly's daughter-in-law's brother who is in hospital after being hit by a car and he suffered severe injuries and prayers for Holly as well who actually is uh, been taking care of Jesse and prayers for Julie Wendy's friend having open heart surgery at Northwestern Memorial Chicago on this coming Monday, October 5. And also for Dale, for his upcoming surgery in a couple of weeks. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray to you because you have called us out by name. After you made us companions for you and each other. As we worship this day through our singing, praying, giving and thinking, Help us also to feel your presence among us. We are so often locked into our own little world. Make us mindful of the persons, not just in this house, but also in cyberspace and your church as your body. Make us aware and sensitive to their needs and hurts 
as you are aware of ours. Amen. Today we gather with our brothers and sisters all around the world in this special day, World Communion Sunday. And we also gather around the communion table of Tower Hill Campground here in Sawyer, Michigan. And all around the world today we will hear in different prayers and different ways and styles people's bringing praise to God as we celebrate this special meal together. So join us for this moment when we all, with all our brothers and sisters around the world, commune with God. Let us pray. Creating God, we give thanks that you brought this world and all of humanity into being breathing life into us. You show yourself in each face we encounter, each and all created in your image. You taught us how to serve you and how to honor each other. To bring us into relationship with you, you sent us prophets and teachers. We offer thanks that when we ignored your embrace, you persisted in reaching out to us. We thank you most for the life and ministry of Jesus. The death and resurrection of Christ taught us that nothing, not even death, can separate us from you. Through your Holy Spirit, you breathe through us, covering us as your church. And thank you for continuing to bring us together, that we may celebrate you. Amen. As we gather here with thanksgiving, we remember on the night of Jesus' betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the bread, broke it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Every time you do it, do it in remembrance of me. This is the bread of life. Take and eat, for there is plenty.
We also recall how Jesus, in the same way after they were finished with the meal, took the cup of thanksgiving, gave thanks to God and said, Take, drink. This is the cup of the new covenant which is poured out for you. Every time you drink from it, do it in remembrance of me. This is the cup of the new covenant. Take and drink, for there is plenty. And now, let us say the prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. We are here today to gather strength by being together, and also being together with the Spirit of God, so that we can do God's ministry in this world that He loved so much. So let us now gather our gifts together and offer it to God in gratitude and in praise. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for the gifts you bestow upon us each and every day. Help us to be more aware of your many gifts and guide our lives in such ways that we and our gifts may be gifts to others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
I have some ministry items I'd like to share with you this morning. You are invited to join us for fellowship this morning, starting at 10 a.m. And if you don't have the link, please email or text CO. Thanks to everyone for your donations during our recent drop-off for our local food pantry, the self-help closet and pantry of dust lanes, as well as Exodus World Service. Thanks to our coordinator, Sharon Uri, and thanks to Lowell Handy for taking the food donations over to the self-help closet. Please check our October tidings, our monthly tidings for our guidelines for in-person in worship. <laughs> as well as the next notes from Co. As you will read, we will start our in-person in -person worship service on what is actually our anniversary Sunday, Sunday, October 25th. And all the information will be in the October tidings and in your notes from Co. so check that out. Also on Sunday, October 25th, in honor of our church's anniversary, we are going to try an outdoor progressive lunch in our parking lot. And the information, again, is in your October tidings. will be in the notes from Co. in the next couple of weeks. Um, basically, we will have um, a gathering where everybody brings their own lunch and their own chairs, and we will social distance, and it will be an opportunity to see each other from a safe distance and enjoy fellowship on our anniversary Sunday. You need to sign up, reservations only, and you can do that by calling the church office or through our website. Um, reservations only, and again, you'll hear more about this in the next couple of weeks, but we hope that you'll join us and the, um, the group will be limited to 50 people, so just something to keep in mind. Also coming up later today, uh, we will have a blessing of the pets in our church parking lot. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, it's on our lawn um, outside the Graceland entrance, and that will be at two o'clock with Pastor Marsha Urban. And um, we invite you to join us and all pets are welcome. Uh, we ask the pet owners to wear a mask. If it does happen to be raining, significantly raining, um, you are invited to park in the church parking lot uh, near the west entrance, and Marsha will come to your car and bless your pet. But otherwise, we will gather on the lawn outside of our Graceland entrance for our blessing of the pets. And a reminder to please sign our guest book and to include yourself in the total number of guests. Thanks to everyone who is worshiping with us today, and have a great week. You have been fed at the table of Jesus Go now and feed other people. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob continue to guide you as we go now in peace. Watching from afar.